Hello everyone, my name is Umu and I'm React to the Cage channel creator. Hello everyone, my name is Kevin. I am a pianist as well as the longest here in the game for another two days or so. And today we will be reacting to Wavy's Turn Back Time. Please stick to the end where we will be having a Zoom interview with Turn Back Times and Moonwalk songwriters. Three, two, one, turn it back. Ooh, I like the beginning. It's very atmospheric. Eerie strings ascending. The suspense builds. Oh my god. Oh, rewind sound effects. Okay. Oh my gosh. Some SoundCloud rapping font. I'm I guarantee it was going to be better than average SoundCloud rap, though. I can't already feel it. Ooh. Yeah. Oh. oh no, I can't understand the Mandarin. Something about seconds. Oh, but I love yeah, that. I like those rhythms. The slightly out of tune synths. Oh, it just opens up. Hear those harmonies! Wow! What? It's funny. From the second the song started, I knew it was gonna have a uh, major modal mixture. <laughs> it's a signature of the track makers, Moonshine. I feel like. They love playing modally between minor and major. I just love that it's like a sound, typical SoundCloud type beat, and then it turns into this. And every section feels so distinct in the the different keys. Ah, oh, see, this one's in minor. The other one was in major, but with a flat six. I heard a little wah wah. Did you hear all those different synth sounds that they used to transition to the chorus? Holy! <laughs> Who's having the music video? <laughs> what? Nobody told me there were going to be distorted guitars. <laughs> oh. Yes. Oh my god, that bass line. Yes, outro. The, the guitar comes back. So good. Oh, I love that head motion. It's like so much chaos going on. We get an actual final note. It's not one of those pop songs where it just ends at the end of the measure. No, we actually get a final note. What is this? Okay. <laughs> just a little outro. Yeah, I really like their head motion when there's so much instrumental chaos. They're just chilling in it. It's so great. I love the familiarity of this track. In no way is it like copy paste of anything in the past, but we have not motifs. We have writing techniques <laughs> that have appeared in Moonwalk that like we can connect these two songs. In Moonwalk, don't they go five, four, three, two? Moonwalk. 
Like, yeah, the, get, the hard rock guitar break oh, in Moonwalk and in Turn Back Time. And then here. Yeah, five four three two. Except they went five four three two one, and here they just rap five four three two. And then next, the dance break. It goes between half steps. Da, 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 da. And I love that part. Like da 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 I'm gonna ask <laughs> it's too quick for my brain to catch on to the notes. <laughs> da, 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 da. Okay, another moment that caught my attention was the, all the synth sounds quickly added in to transition between sections. Let's see. Pre-chorus to chorus. So first time they add in the kind of like a muted trap hi-hat where it goes da, 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 da. Or no, that wouldn't be a trap hi-hat. I recognize the percussion sample, but I'm not sure what the name is for it. It's like the the triplet synth sample. <laughs> okay, and then second time. There you go. <laughs> they add in that synth. And they have just like a little swell. And then they also add in the the triplet da 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 thing going into the chorus. So production is great. I cannot wait to ask the top liners about their writing too. Holy cow, like, Moonshine must have worked so frick- I mean, they always work so freaking hard, but the amount of times that, like, I kept switching between listening to just the vocal melody and the instrumental, and every single mm. time I switched between, I noticed something new. And mm. I like the energy of the rap because we contrasted faster rhythms with, like, catchy rhythms towards the end of the phrases, and, uh, yeah, I have a feeling Adrian did the chorus, so, and that's like, the chorus melody is so satisfying. I could just see myself, like, just relaxing into it and being uh, surrounded and floating in those harmonies. Yeah, I didn't catch as much of the rhythm stuff mm. because I was paying attention to what scales they were using because every different section, it felt like they scale. were. Yeah, they were doing a different technique. They were, yeah. So there was one section that where it was in major, but the sixth scale degree was flat. So it 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 helped um, create a minor four. So it's a major E flat major with a minor four chord, and that gave a I wouldn't I wouldn't call it exotic, but definitely a different type of. It's, it's just that major E minor E feeling. So you know the the chorus kind of goes has the um what do we call Picardy third. Haven't used that word in a while. Let's let's stick to, to major cuz um major I've three. had yeah yeah like a uh, modal mixture major 3. Okay. Yeah, that's a better that's actually a better way of calling it cuz Picardy third is specifically used in the ending of organ pieces usually. But <laughs> what I like about it is usually when there's a chord progression, in, usually in a chorus of a K-pop song, that goes back into that major, major third, the vocals have to be the one doing the major third. So if we use this melody, it would sound something like da 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 ti, mm -hmm. except they go back up to the fifth. So da da da, da, da ti, and then they have the instruments do the Picardy third. And oh. I don't think I've heard that very often. Usually, yeah, if there's a, well, not Picardy third, if there's a major three, the vocals have to be the ones to do it, which gives us a very intense major three feeling. But I like here that the vocals kind of swoop back up into a nice. less important note. Yeah, there's that feeling of like, oh, this is something different. It's very subtle, but it's not like hammering on the major three like I'm used to hearing. And then it was the bridge breakdown. I think I oh went Phrygian because it had the da 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 All I could pay attention to was the guitars. Yeah. Yeah, and those it, were some good guitars. Yeah, the sound was so like nasty and mm -hmm. like affected that I almost had trouble actually hearing the notes because I was like, exactly. I have no idea. I just hear rhythm and sound yeah. right That's now. That's when you're doing it right. <laughs> oh, and yeah. then it appears again at the end and it was so welcome. And I was really surprised the song actually ended with a final note instead yeah. of just like cutting off. Right now I think yeah. it's the time because I asked for fans actually to send us questions. Okay. So did you uh, talk at all about the lyrics? It talks about like, oh, the second hand, ticking, ticking, everything's a second. And then it talks about like, 
I think there was one part that talks about cause and effect and like going back in time and just just a lot of that stuff. 请直观无色生香味触法的虚幻 Yeah, man. I I would have never. I would have never known known that was what it said because it's 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 pretty poetic. It's like too poetic for me to just spot.、Uh. Like this is something I noticed from the only other Chinese version of a K-pop song that I remember was a Miracles in December,、uh-huh. and I just remember how overwhelmed I was by the poetry of the lyrics. Like、uh. they really flower it up. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But yeah, there are six internal senses based on six internal senses. Based in Buddhism, what are the six senses? I know the five senses. Six senses, maybe inner eye is one. The line basically translates to "Please directly look at the colorless, sound, smell, taste, touch, and mirage, or or like hallucination." Yeah, mind is the sixth sense. Yeah, so everything. Wow, that's like. In the fewest characters possible, cover through everything. Yeah, that's possible. I definitely think that. The songwriter may have had that that other song, or is the Seventh Sense an album or a song? It's it's NCT U song. It's the very、okay. first NCT U song that you ever reacted to. Wait, did you react to it? I'm okay with this. So Kevin and I are gonna go back in, listen to the song a few more times, and then we'll interview Tay Jasper and Adrian McKinnon on this song. Three days later. All right, welcome to our interview with the two top liners producers for Wavy's Moonwalk and Turn Back Time. Tay Jasper and Adrian McKinnon. Woo! Thank you for having us. <laughs> Let's just jump into the first question immediately. So I was told by Moonshine from like right from the get go that you guys knew that you were writing this song for Wavy. So I was wondering how the concept came to be. Adrian, were you once again the concept creator for this song? With Moonwalk, Tay and I both actually created the concept. I guess once that song got established, it seemed like the internal team at SM really liked the theme. So. I guess we got an we got an email at a certain point, basically saying, "Okay, we kind of want to go with this going back in time theme." They told us turn back time is what they want to go with, so we basically wrote based off of that. It was really cool because they they always talked about how they wanted to have like that uh like super spacey in time vibe, and I think that's kind of like what what captured the the momentum for that. Pretty much their whole album was based off of like that like space and time vibes. When you guys wrote the lyrics for this song,、um, some fans were wondering if you did anything on purpose for "Turn Back Time" to、uh, relate back to "Moonwalk," like anything harmonically or lyrically.、Uh, definitely the five, four, three, two. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah,、uh, okay, was, yeah no, that was. <laughs> sounds like you got some bets. You're winning some bets right now. <laughs> yeah, the five, four, three, two. But again, that was、um, also. They they recommended it. SM is who recommended that idea. So let's keep that whole thing going. So now there's a cool theme going with Wavy. Yeah, they have their own little、uh, vibe, their own theme going. I'm、right、travelers. <laughs> do you, is Moonwalk and Turn Back Time? Do you think this is going to become Wavy sound? Because we know NCT does have a recognizable sound with like very prominent minor bass loops.、Um, do you think this new modal switching between major and minor, and then having a guitar dance break? Do you think that's going to become Wavy's thing? I like their sound. I, I think it totally should become their their theme.、Uh, Moonshine's vibe and the way that they produce is like so progressive and so like. I mean, sometimes it doesn't even seem like it would fit together, and then like you see it happening, and you're like, "What? This is crazy." Well, that's definitely how I felt when I when I heard the song. I was like, "Whoa, what's happening?" <laughs> at the same time, I'm always surprised at what they come up with for the next move. You know, like they always they seem to、um, aim to surprise. I think with every group. Really, but、um, this is a very nice aesthetic to kind of differentiate them from the rest. I think、mm-hmm. it's pretty cool. You know, the song is constantly exciting, and there are sort of new motifs and stuff appearing in each section. And I think, what's your secret in creating a singular experience within a song that is so musically rich? Like, how? What is your role in listening to the production and going like, "Whoa, the, how do I how do I add my part into this?" I, I would say, like, you know. I think one of the biggest reasons I work with Adrian so well, and the reason like like the first time we ever did a camp together and it worked, was like our dynamics in writing are are very different. So we attack songs in a very like, hey, all right, let, let, let me let me attack this four bars right here, and then I'm gonna pass it to you. But you just、mm. do something completely different than what I did. Just like don't even think about what I did. Just.、Yeah. 
like do something completely left and then we'll bounce off of that and go and go back and uh, now you return that back with like something completely left than what I just did and, 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 and it's really awesome because we have this like really cool dynamic of being able to kind of go back and forth with little sections until we feel like we have something that's really fun and energetic and flows all the way through. So. We, we don't really aim for any specific sort of rigid structure. Um, I think it really comes down to just that the joy that we have when we create together. Um, I definitely feel a chemistry. I would even go, yeah, say chemistry between you guys. I can hear it <laughs> off the yeah. songwriting and it's really awesome. That's Thank cool. You. Yeah. I'm glad you can catch that. <laughs> <laughs> so when writing Turn Back Time, this one was one while you were overseas and they sent you the concept or was it at a songwriting camp? Ooh, where did we start Turn Back Time? <laughs> Uh, was that, that was at your house? That was at my apartment, yeah. Oh, yeah, uh, okay, okay, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what was crazy about that is, like, that was, uh, we were working on something else entirely, uh, oh, which we can't, yeah. we can't talk about it yet. <laughs> 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 we were working on something entirely different, and then we got the email, and I was like, hey, Tay, while you're here, why don't we, why don't we try this? And then um, Tay came up with the, uh, the pre-chorus. Yeah, okay, that's what it was. I know how like like everybody like Tay is he's definitely like he has the strength in rap, but you guys don't understand this guy is like melodically very talented. <laughs> Damn dude, oh, yeah. I yeah. like my first guess was it was Adrian, but hands <laughs> off to you, man. <laughs> that was all that was all Tay on the pre course and I was like, Yes, that whatever that was that was what kick started <laughs> the whole song. And uh, we just went off of that. And we knew it was going to be Rap League just because, you know, there's a lot of members of Wavy that can, that can spit. So thank you. We went into the rap mode in the second verse, and I was like, all right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, going off that, I was going to ask about, because uh, I was expecting, Tay, you just, like, did the whole rap thing. But I can mm -hmm. ask both of you, what what's your magic for creating a rap verse that is both catchy and just keeps the energy moving forward? Uh, I would say, you know, I always like to like have like moments in the rap that I would like that, that could stand out and that can also be used as like a group. So like we always try to make the raps like very like chanty. Like if you listen to the first verse in Turn Back Time, it's like dun 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 dun, dun boy, going back, back, you know, like like super like fun and chanty that like everybody could do. And then not trying to like make it you know, like too complicated, but just make it fun and like something that like you can hear one time and you know what's gonna happen next, you know? Like you're like, okay, I can vibe with this. Mm -hmm. Like that right. balance between catchy and uh, unexpected. Is, yeah, uh, exactly. It's a fun, it's a fun game to play, trying to figure that out. Tay being the rapper guy, like I'll go in and I'll try my raps and then sometimes Tay will kind of give me some pointers on like, mm -hmm. <laughs> all right, so here's what we're gonna do. <laughs> we're gonna approach it this way. Right. Yeah, it yeah. definitely feels natural, no matter how unexpected and how many surprises are along the way. And I think that's really special. When it comes to rap, what do you think the importance of like inflection and vocal dynamics are? Oh man, super important. Uh, if if you listen to like any of your favorite rappers, uh, I know my favorite rapper, like Drake and Kanye, their dynamics in their voice is what makes it really cool. Like it's not like super, it doesn't have to be super fast. It doesn't have to be, it's just like the way they enunciate everything, the way they like put dynamics and emphasis on certain words, it really creates the feeling inside of you and that's what rap is it's not like somebody's up there singing the national anthem and they're just blowing you away with these <laughs> vocals. it's like, no, like you're listening to the inflection you're listening into the, the cadence that they choose and uh i think that's what makes like the rapping so important and that's why i admire um you know all the groups that we've worked with because they've been able to really capture these raps and like have that inflection and, and it's hard. It's like really hard. So I admire all the groups that are able to kind of study and practice that for sure. Yeah. yeah. Are great. you the person who we thank for creating the second verse rap in Super M's Dropping? Second verse rap in... Eight track. You know what? It's so funny because so that song came together uh, a, a lot of ways. So I was um, I was in the studio right here. This is where we made Jopping at right here. Uh, <laughs> and I actually had uh, two of my uh, two artists that I work with. They were over here that day. And they're, they're the young rappers in the city here in uh, New Mexico. And, you know, I challenged them and I was like, hey, you know, I'm working on this song. If you guys can both write a verse. I'll, I'll leave your verse on the song, you know? So I left the house, and I come back, 
and uh, the artist, his name is Jafro Damas, and he actually wrote that verse. And then on the day, Shadi, like, it was so good. And I, I, like, looked at him, and I was like, bro, it's <laughs> such a great verse. So, yeah, I got to give respect to my little homie. Uh, his name is Jafro Damas. That was his first ever K-pop song, his first placement ever, and it was that verse in Japan. <laughs> was he surprised yeah, at he how questioned. like immediate that second verse became so popular and iconic? Man, he was so he was so surprised and so thankful. Uh, like I told him from the get, I was like, "Man, dude, this verse is gonna be epic." And I knew that they were gonna have Mark do it. Of course, I just knew. They were gonna have Mark. I just knew it. I was like, "They're gonna have Mark do this." And then as soon as I heard the song and I saw Mark, I was like, "Oh, bro, this is gonna be." you know, one of the most famous verses in K-pop, bro. This is a huge verse. And, but um, yeah, that was, I, I told him that was a, a classic K-pop verse and that would definitely go down in, as, as one of the best rap verses, yeah. I, I just wonder how many of the fans caught the first line. <laughs> Thank you, big boy, throwing three snacks. <laughs> I was like, when I first heard that, I was like, okay. Yeah. Some outcast references. That was like <laughs> super clean. But um, on an eight track, like, oh man, he he, it was so good. The references and everything were great. Yeah. Yeah, gotta yeah. gotta bring hip hop and rap back to its roots. You know, it's exactly. really nice to hear that in K-pop. Go, going back to some of the concepts and stuff, fans have pointed out that Take Over the Moon, The Seventh Sense, and Turn Back Time. They all hint at like Buddhist philosophies and ideals, and we were we were wondering if this was planned from the start or did it evolve sort of maybe through the translation into Korean and the as it went along. It's interesting because we we don't have too much control over what happens after what we write versus mm. you know what they write. Um, mm. There are times when they'll hold fast to uh, the concepts that we come up with during the demo, and sometimes. Usually in the case of where if it doesn't really translate very well or if the concept that we have here on the West doesn't really make a lot of sense and they'll come up with something else. But I think over time, maybe this is just a guess and thematically they decided to hold to that. But again, these are different, these are different, con you have seven cents which is separate from, you know, that's not wavy specific. So, mm -hmm. right, yeah. right. so maybe these, this is just me spitballing here, but I think just that the Buddhist philosophy bridging to a, a broader audience. And so for people to have sort of that appreciation for those really cool um, analogies and, and ways of looking at looking at life, you know, really. So <laughs> yeah, that. I feel like there's sort of a combination of sci-fi and the mystical stuff in these songs and these music videos. And I think they work really well. I was surprised by how well they work. I'm like, oh, this is like, there's like a time travel thing that's like more sci-fi. And then there's like a, some Buddhist lyricism in it as well. Yeah, I've always been curious how drastically maybe any of the rhythms have changed in translation from the English demo to the Chinese or Korean demo. Do they change the concepts to keep your rhythms exactly the same and change the lyrics? Or do they ever stick to your original concept and then some of the rhythms get changed up? Yeah, they, they hold fast to like the, syllabic rhythms and, and those kinds of things more so than anything because generally what we talk about might be a little too <laughs> a little too edgy sometimes for us we really want to make sure that what it is that we are creating on our end feels good to us and we don't always contemplate whether or not it will make sense over there um, because the delivery is it's really key it's really important for how we how we convey what it is that we mean and I think they absorb, and maybe even some of the A&Rs don't even understand the English, you know, when they listen to it and then they decide on the song. They just want to see if that feeling is, is there and if it's mm -hmm. realistic enough for them to go, okay, now what are they talking about? Can we mm -hmm. use that? I feel like that's the second stage. Mm -hmm. Again, this is just me guessing. I don't know. <laughs> I guess like the essence of the songwriting gets transferred despite any sort of language barrier or maybe um, cultural sort of thing that yeah, you have to get over. That's really cool. It, it reminds me of like the question you asked earlier, like, you know, what makes a rap like dynamic, you know? And it's the way the delivery of it is what makes people, like you might not even know what someone's saying, which a lot of times we probably don't, but how they deliver it and it makes you feel a certain type of way. And so I think they always keep the delivery and the, the rhythms and they just change the words to match either a concept that they're trying to create for the artist or either, you know, maybe not make it as sexual or, or whatever, you know, like right. I know we definitely had to change a few things in Japan a couple times because 
there, there couldn't be any like references <laughs> about something. <laughs> you know, Interesting, yeah. and then love talk exists. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I was like, yeah, they, you know, they definitely made us change a few things in there, but it was cool. It was like I understand like the market that they're trying to attack, and it's just a little different. That's all. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. And so we've covered rap. Now I'm quite curious about like the luscious harmonies. Um, Adrian, in my interview with you last year, you told me your dad was a gospel singer. So actually, I had a friend, Seiji, from the Classical Musicians React series was wondering, in gospel music, the performer takes a lot of liberties on the melody with embellishment or bluesy notes. And how does that influence the way you write your melodies? I, I think it influences it 100%, <laughs> like all the way, no matter what. But I think a lot of the times when I get to really open up is usually in the like the ad libs near the end of the song. Those high notes, those big points, and doing like a lot of those runs and embellishments. Sometimes I'll speckle them in every now and again throughout the song. It's sort of ingrained, so it's not really anything that I, I think about. Even it's interesting because the genre, the whole concept of a genre, is very uh, it's kind of boxy. I think that there's a lot more fluidity in, in musicality in general. I think. The whole concept of a genre is ideally for people to identify and to just, you know, grab what it is they like and try to find similarities. But I think when you're creating, you're not really looking, well, maybe some people are, but I'm not typically looking for, okay, I want to do hip hop. Oh, I want to do gospel. Hey, I want to do this. I right. just kind of see what can I bring? What just, what idea just popped into where I can apply to uh, the song without feeling so specific to any particular genre. But definitely R and B, gospel. That's what I grew up around. So yeah, it's all it's always going to be there. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, we noticed the influence of African American music in this track from the SoundCloud rap at the beginning. That definitely it reminded me of the SoundCloud rap. I know, and I was like, where is this going to go? Um, and the R and B harmonies and etc. Um, this has become sort of the norm in what to expect from K-pop. Um, mm -hmm. What is it about African-American music, gospel, hip-hop, jazz, funk, that leads people from all backgrounds to fall in love with it? I, I personally think it's just the soul, the soul in the music. I think that um, since the beginning of, you know, like since like the last hundred years when music has become more in the forefront, I think the one thing that connects in all genres of music, no matter what it is, is the soul, the passion behind it. And I think that like African music or, you know, black music has always had such passion and soul behind the lyrics, behind the words, behind the voices. And that soul is something that I think that was just, you know, engraved in that culture through the, 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 the things that they have, that we've had to go through, you know, since forever, I think that's created so much soul. Music is always a way to heal and a way to like release any type of negative energy or anything. If your favorite song comes on, the world just feels amazing, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, if you, if, you, if you, your girlfriend or boyfriend broke up with you, you play a song, it, you know, you can feel the passion behind it. And I think that the soul in the music has always been something that everyone around the world has admired and that's why we love you know stevie wonder that's why we love michael jackson that's why we love jay-z and drake you know it's like it's mm -hmm. the soul and passion behind it that makes it really really powerful well said yeah i don't know yeah. what i would add to that <laughs> um no definitely the soul i mean there's the um i think rhythm is a very strong um element to all of those genres and i think we all just across the world have this innate gravitation towards rhythm and i think soul and rhythm is just a really really strong connector to humanity and i feel maybe that has something to do with it but no i think i couldn't say any better than what it tastes like let's so. <laughs> hit it right on the head yeah. All is very true. Now to end this interview, to tie it up, I heard that you two were, at least before COVID, were planning on creating some music together. I'm guess is that a put on a pause now or is that going to slowly, slowly being made? Yeah, so that's, I mean, we, we have the single done. I think that Ooh. for us, it's just about doing it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. It's so like, you know, like we, we all have like, lives and families and things that we're, we're working on and sometimes it can get you can get a little flustered and you're just like all right i gotta do this i gotta do this first and uh i, I will say i'm definitely probably the biggest advocate for doing it all the time I'm always in the message like when are we gonna drop this song very true very true <laughs> the more i even listen to the songs that we've created with london noise 
the more and more we're growing into the time where it's going to actually make sense. And it's like, mm-hmm. oh, man, when this drops, like people are going to be able to pay attention because what we're saying is very like direct to what's happening right now. And I think mm-hmm. it's going to resonate better than it did if we would have dropped it like six months ago or mm-hmm. you know, whatever. So stay tuned. <laughs> all right. All right. <laughs> Well, the second you drop it, once COVID's over, I'm graduated. I'll feature you guys on the channel. We can just talk about your work. I would love to meet up with both of you if you're ever visiting LA, Tay. Um, I'm just a few hours away, so I'd love to feature both of you and just talk about your background some more and plans for the future. And thank you so much for today. Thanks for taking the time out of, you know, family schedules and creating some lit music, I assume. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, and also very some very it. enlightening answers to the questions that the fans and we asked. It was really eye-opening and it was really nice to hear about what goes on behind the scenes. Thank you. We love to, you know, because we, we talk about it all the time. So mm-hmm. it's really awesome to, you know, be able to connect with the fans on that way because we want to hear also like how they feel about what we can do to improve and they're very important too so thank you yeah and i'm just from the fans thank you guys for creating the music like you said when you play your favorite song just everything becomes amazing in life Mm -hmm. and you know a lot of us are going through some darker times with covid and a lot of other events happening and your music is powering us through it's giving us a lot of energy it's giving us a lot of motivation so thank you from all the fans from myself from the bottom of our hearts for creating wow. just such amazing worlds that we can dive into when listening to your music oh thank you <laughs> very much our, our pleasure for sure